This week, it depended who you listened to, but David Cameron either panicked or pulled off an election-winning sensation. Either way, his reshuffle, the biggest in years, took everybody in Westminster by surprise and proved governments could still keep secrets. Nobody had any hint of the fact that Foreign Secretary William Hague was planning to stand down at the general election and, as a result, offer up his job for Cameron to do with as he pleased. And no one had predicted that Education Secretary Michael Gove was going to get the sack from the job where he had made a huge impact, although often at the cost of good relations with teachers and unions. In fact, both men will be given key roles managing the party in the Commons and, more importantly, leading the general election campaign, which has started, in case you missed it, and they may prove to have been very canny appointments. The one non-surprise was the announcement by veteran Minister Ken Clark that after more than 40 years in Parliament, many of them in Cabinet, he was stepping down to make way for some new faces. Clark, who's held many of the most senior jobs, including Chancellor and Health Secretary, has just marked his 74th birthday and claimed he had got fed up with seeing ministerial red boxes every night. David Cameron's always said he wanted to see more women in his cabinet and front bench, and he tried to live up to his word, bringing three new female faces into the cabinet itself and promoting ten others. Big jobs went to Nicky Morgan, who took over Gove's education brief, and Liz Truss, who replaced sacked right-winger Owen Paterson at Environment. Current Employment Minister Esther McVeigh keeps the same job but will now attend Cabinet meetings. Cameron hopes that will secure the Mumsnet vote. Finally, some of the other male, pale and stale faces he moved suggested a distinct hardening of the government's Eurosceptic line. The new Foreign Secretary is Philip Hammond, who had previously said he'd be ready to vote to take the UK out of the EU if treaty renegotiations were not successful. And new Attorney General Jeremy Wright may be more ready than his predecessor Dominic Grieve to see the UK withdraw from the European Court of Human Rights. Will it all work, or will such a brutal knight of the long knives have built up resentments and made the Prime Minister enemies and therefore foment backbench revolts in future? We will have to see. And that's it for this week. To keep up to date with all the politics from Westminster, go to ibtimes.co.uk.